Whenever we apply a modifier to a view, we actually create a copy of that view with the change applied. Now, if you think about it, this behavior makes perfect sense. Our structs have only the properties they're supposed to have, the ones we gave them when we defined them. If we later on say, oh, by the way, you've got a background color or a special font, there's no way to store that inside our structs. Now, we're going to look at why this happens shortly. But first, I want to look at the practical implications of this behavior. Here in my body here, I'll say there is a button with a title of Hello World. We'll give this an action that's empty for now. We'll just do nothing. And then I'll apply two modifiers, background.red and frame width 200, height 200. Now, if you hadn't seen my preview, would you have predicted that's what it's going to look like? Because many folks would see us and think, well, you're going to have a 200 by 200 red button with Hello World written on. And instead, we see a 200 by 200 empty square with a tiny red rectangle in the middle saying Hello World. Now, you can understand what's happening here if you think about the way modifiers work. Each one we apply creates a new struct with that modifier applied to it, rather than just changing a property of an existing view. You can, if you want to, peek a little bit into the underbelly of SwiftUI here by modifying this button's action to ask for the type of our view body. What's actually inside this thing? We'll do print type of, of even, self, come on Hudson, dot body, there we go. And we'll run that code back. Now, Swift, uh, Swift's type of method here, uh, sorry, its function here, uh, this prints the exact type of any value we give it, whether an int or a string, whatever. I don't mean the content of the string or, you know, 59 for the integer. It'll say it's an int or it's a string. So here we're saying, what is the actual internal type of our view? And remember, we're sending back some view we don't know about it internally, but Swift does. So I'll press this thing, and it'll tell me the type of the view. And that is the answer there. It is a modified content, modified content, button text, underscore background style modifier, color, underscore frame layout. You can see two things here. First up, every time we modify a SwiftUI view, Swift wraps that for us. So we have a modified content type with its content plus the modifier. That's one thing here. So we've got a button with a background attached to it. That's happening here. When we apply mod multiple modifiers, it gets wrapped again. So here's our button. Here's our button with a modified background. And around that is our modified content with our previous modified content, but now with a frame layout. So read it from innermost if you want to. We've got our button here, then our button with a background color, and then outside of that is our button with a background color and our frame layout. And you can see it stacking up here. It stacks up again and again and again. Each one takes a view to transform what we had before plus the actual change to make, rather than modifying it directly. We haven't just got a button text as a single type, which happens to have different properties inside of background, font, and so forth. This exactly matches the order we applied things. It's a background, then our frame. What this means is the order of your modifiers matters. If we rewrite the code so that the background color comes after the frame, look at the preview now. It'll have a little think for a second, Bang, now the background's been applied to the whole frame, been applied to the whole 200 by 200 area. When you're learning, I think the best way to think about this is to imagine SwiftUI renders your view after every single modifier. So as soon as you say background red, bang, it'll color the background red, regardless of what frame you give it later on. 
If you then later expand the frame, doesn't matter. It won't redraw the background. It's already done that filling thing. That background's already happened. That was applied previously. You just change the frame later. Doesn't matter. This is not actually how SwiftUI works. It'd be a hideous performance nightmare if that was true, but it's a neat mental shortcut while you're learning. Now, an important side effect of using modifiers like this is that we can actually apply an effect multiple times because each one simply adds to what was there before again and again and again. For example, you've seen the padding modifier a lot. We could say something like a uh, text, hello world, like I had at the beginning, then apply some padding around it, then say I want to have a background of dot red. That's simple and straightforward. But we can now say actually after that is some more padding and then a background of blue. And we'll now get red and blue. Then we can say there's padding, background, background even. Let's do green and then padding dot background dot yellow. And they stack up and stack up exactly as you'd expect. 